Is there life beyond the grave? If the soul exists, does it survive death? If so, when did the belief first arise that the soul may reincarnate, to be born anew in another physical body? Before we unlock the future, we must find the keys to the past. I'm Leonard Nimoy. Join me and open the door to ancient mysteries beginning now here on A&E. Thousands of years ago, the ancient Egyptians believed that the soul continued to exist after death, then journeyed to another world. Yet some Egyptians believe the soul returns to Earth and reincarnates in a new physical body. Is the current Dalai Lama evidence of the rebirth of someone who lived before? Why was he chosen to become spiritual head of one of the world's great faiths? Though it may have once been central to Judaism and Christianity, the idea of reincarnation was eventually stifled by church and synagogue. After centuries of suppression, the discovery of a skeleton buried in a basement in New York State ignited widespread belief in reincarnation. In more recent times, a Colorado housewife claimed to have lived in a foreign land hundreds of years earlier. What evidence exists to prove the theory of reincarnation? Step back in time with us as we follow those who've long asked one of the most profound of all questions. Is death the end, or do we live again in a new physical body? It has probably happened to many of us at some time or another. It is called deja vu. Suddenly, in an area never before visited, there's an indefinable feeling of familiarity. In some mysterious way, there's a sense that you've been here before. Could this be possible? What about the person with whom you've chosen to share your life? Have you known one another before? Perhaps, as some believe, in a previous life? The human mind has grappled with the notion of reincarnation for millennia. In some cultures, the idea was often seen as a threat, warning of dire consequences for an unjust and dishonest life. Might evil deeds committed in a present life lead to reincarnation on a lower level, such as an animal or an insect? On the other hand, would a life of merit promise rewards in the next incarnation? Is belief in reincarnation a conviction as old as humanity's faith in a divine force that creates and judges the world? The overwhelming majority of the Earth's inhabitants believe in life after death. But a sizable proportion also clings to the notion that the soul is not simply destined for heaven or hell, but returns to life in another physical body. What evidence exists to endorse this view, especially as most people probably have no recollection whatever of their previous lives? Many people feel that reincarnation can't exist because they don't remember their past. And my answer to the world is we do remember. We don't have the details, but we have certain key hints as to who we are, the type of music we like, 
the people we're most attracted to, the types of food we like, the clothing we wear, certain periods in history that we identify with. These are indications that this is where we have been before. And so our present incarnation or our present lifetime is a composite of all the fruits of what we were before. When did the concept of reincarnation first take root? To probe the mystery, we must embark on a quest deep into antiquity. For the ancient world holds alluring clues to the earliest stirrings of the idea that life may indeed transcend death. It is a belief that may date back to the Stone Age. Tens of thousands of years ago, many primitive societies buried their dead in a fetal position. Could this perhaps suggest a belief in reincarnation, in which the deceased was being made ready for possible rebirth? Today, India remains one of the most vital links with the ancient past. Here, Hinduism is the predominant pathway of faith. At least five to six thousand years old, much of its origins remain a mystery. But it is the oldest known religion still practiced anywhere in the world today. Acceptance of reincarnation is central to Hinduism. A person's rebirth in a new physical body is believed to be a direct result of how one lived in a previous life. Escaping the endless cycle of birth and rebirth is fundamental to followers of the faith. The process is known as karma. The ultimate aim is to break the cycle, to allow the soul to return to its maker, thus avoiding further reincarnations. You escape it according to the theory. When you completely overcome your egotistical desires, when you become compassionate, when your heart opens up to the whole world, and when you are ready to join your maker, that's when you uh, escape the will of samsara, as the Hindus say. But as long as we have desires, we'll come back time and again to satisfy them. Or as long as we have karma to, uh, uh, to pay, the law of cause and effect will bring us down until our soul matures to that state where it has no longer any reason to come back to this world. Among the Hindus, the cow has long been held sacred. Why? Is there a conviction that animals have souls too? If so, do they also conform to the laws of karma, to the cycle of birth and rebirth? And in Hinduism, you can be reborn from human to animal to even lower forms. It, it all depends on the actions that you perform in the life. You can go up or down. You could be reborn at a lower form, or you could be reborn as a god. Of all the religions in the East, none adheres more strongly than Jainism to the belief that everything in the world undergoes a process of reincarnation. In Jainism, we find that uh, the notion of the soul appears not just in humans, but in literally everything that exists, in animals, in plants, in uh, what they call organisms, microorganisms, even in rocks and stones. The soul can progress from form to form. However, the human body is the one body in which souls can become liberated. So committed are the Jains to a belief in reincarnation that to avoid destroying even the most insignificant creature, many of them wear face masks to avoid ingesting the tiniest of insects. Insects which, to the Jains, may once have been human. If they're responsible for taking the life of another being, they believe they will reincarnate again to pay a debt for their sin. In neighboring Tibet, Buddhism, originally from India, 
has been the national religion for some 1,400 years.